On October 3rd, we're inviting you to join us as we welcome Salem City Manager Keith Staley. Stop by the Salem Police Station Community Room anytime between 5.30 and 7 p.m. to meet Keith. Keith has more than 30 years of local government experience and most recently served as Assistant City Manager for the City of Olympia, Washington, where he managed the Office of Community Vitality. Keith led community development, climate, community court, housing and homeless responses, as well as economic development programs. We've heard great things from everyone who's worked with him in Olympia. You can and should expect continued excellence in fiscal and policy management from the city with Keith at the helm. We're honoring and recognizing our great volunteers here in the city on October 17th at the Salem Public Library. The city relies heavily on the skills, time, talent, and energy of Salem residents who work with appointed officials, paid staff, and elected representatives on issues of importance to the community. We'll open the doors at 5 p.m. and begin the volunteer recognition ceremony at 6. Every October, we join with Oregonians across the state in an earthquake preparedness drill. You can participate in the Great Oregon Shakeout on October 20th at 10.20 a.m. In the meantime, sign up for emergency alerts on our website to get critical time-sensitive emergency notifications for up to five addresses, like your home, work, child or grandchild school, or the route you plan to use in the event uh, of a nearby fire or other emergency. Well, I'm here today with Carol Snyder, who's president of the uh, Salem Parks Foundation. Carol, welcome. Uh, you guys have got a lot going on. I've got one project I really want to focus on with you today. But before we get started on your project, Tell us a little about the Parks Foundation, what you do and uh, kind of what you're up to. Well, we're a small group of all volunteers. There's nine of us actually right now. And so we don't have any staff or office space or any kind of overhead. We just are a volunteer group period. And we have our official mission is to improve, enhance and advocate for the park system of Salem, Oregon. But what that means is that we raise money to make improvements to the parks that augment the city's budget. And then we also do advocate for parks. I, I've seen you in action, as you know, over the past 15 years, uh, been involved with city government. But you've off, I've often seen you raising money for park benches, to plant trees. I mean, it's, it's really the local neighborhood contacts you or the local park advocates in the neighborhoods and say, we want to do X and the park foundation, the system. Is that kind of how this works? Yes, we have our main program is what we call the Neighborhood Park Grant Program. And we go around to all the neighborhood associations, all 18 of them here in Salem, and tell them about this every year. And they can apply for money to make an improvement or two in their local park. And then we work with the city and get it done and we foot the bill. And or, it really works part well. Of the bill. Yeah. yeah, it yeah. really works yeah. well. Yeah. Uh, the big issue you're working on right now uh, is the Echo Earth Ball. Yes. Uh, Tell me a little about the Echo Earth Ball. Maybe uh, as I had heard, learned it as a young person here in town, the acid ball. Yes. Kind yes. of where, where'd that come from? How did it end up Echo Earth? What's going on down there? Well, the acid ball it was actually an industrial thing uh, that Boise Cascade used. To br it, it's full of acid and it breaks down the wood into pulp when they had their paper mill here. And then when they uh, finished their paper mill and, and that property became Riverfront Park, uh, the acid ball was left, I think at the request of the city even. Mm -hmm. So then they decided what to do with it. And there were a lot of ideas. People wanted it made into a chia pet or, <laughs> or or the sun and make a solar system out from it. But they came up with making a replica of the planet Earth as a, a tile uh, mosaic. 
and that's what they did. And it was an all volunteer project. It took about four years. And they finished in 2003, and it's been in Riverfront Park ever since. My recollection is uh, a big push behind that was Mayor Roger Gert. Yes, yes, he was kind of the brainchild, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and it, 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 I watched it being done as the park really got going, and it's been a, a tremendous volunteer project. My impression is what you're doing now is raising money to save it. I mean, if people haven't noticed, it's losing tiles. Yes, it's it's literally falling apart, yeah. Okay. <laughs> and yes, uh, we get donations all the time, and when people make donations to us, they, they can sometimes specify a project or a park. And we got a donation last year to repair EcoEarth. And we, uh, so we looked into that and to find out, we knew it was falling apart and we were worried about it, but we looked to see what the city was doing. And the city was certainly aware of it too. And they had, had done a, a big study to see how much it would cost to fix it. Uh, and they were trying to figure out how to get that kind of money. And uh, as you know, the city has lots of other places to put their money. So we thought maybe we could help because raising money for park features is what we do. Yeah, it's great. It was, it was something I noticed uh, as mayor and really began talking a lot with mm -hmm. the city about it, uh, in part because of its location. Tell yes. me a little about its location. Yeah, then. well, it's, it's in Riverfront Park, which is our event park. And so any big event that brings tourists in, or a lot of big events that bring tourists in, take place in Riverfront Park. And since the globe was put in there, the park has changed. For one thing, they put up the Peter Courtney Bridge, and then they built the Rotary Amphitheater, and the Earth Globe is right in between them. So it's kind of front and center. Anybody who uses Riverfront Park now is very aware of the Earth Globe, Eco Earth. Yeah. Exactly, and, and it certainly was a huge motivation for me and for I think the council, uh, and it was several different city councils that worked on this uh, to put, to, to really get to a point where we could actually hand you something that you could yeah. work with. You have the original art director involved, how's that? Yes, Mary Heinzman was an art teacher at the time of the original build in the, 2000, 2003, uh, she worked at Salem Academy, I think, as an art teacher. And she gathered together a lot of local artists and also students in the high schools. And they crafted these wonderful ceramic icons that are on the globe, you know, uh, things that represent different countries and areas. Yeah, and, it's not just it's, a road map, is it? It's no, it is not. I mean, <laughs> there's, there's everything in there. There's the Taj Mahal and pandas in China and penguins and, and even the face of Nelson Mandela in, in South Africa. So yeah, it's... It's a beautiful thing. I think we've all admired it, but watching it, do you know what went wrong? What's what's happened well, over I there? Well, I think just a lot of things. I think the original adhesive was probably not as good as it needed to be for the the weather exposure. The, and maybe they didn't even have adhesives that were that good. Now they do. You know that that technology has changed. And then uh, there is just the weather, the sun and the rain and the cold and everything, and it's right out there. Um, there's some thought that the pile driving for the bridge uh, shook a lot of the tiles loose. And so just time and the weather and, and it, it just needs to be fixed. And then, and then it wasn't maintained because that, you know, it's probably if some of this had been caught earlier, it would have been fine. But, but as we know, pieces start falling other off. Yeah. Yes, <laughs> yep, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Um, the city has devoted uh, a part of its web page to Echo Earth. Kind of what's going on with that? Where, what can people find out? Uh, what yeah. what yeah. can they do to help? What I do uh, to find out about Echo Earth on the web page, I just go to it's the new web page and there's a, a search bar at the top of the first page and you just can type in Echo Earth and, and the Eco Earth page will pop up and it gives a history of it and it tells you how you can donate. There's a link 
to the Salem Parks Foundation website donation page. And then there's also a link there to a video of the making of EcoEarth. And that's really fun to watch. Oh, I'll And bet. you can watch it on your laptop or your phone, but you can also watch it if you have a smart TV with YouTube, which I now have. Oh, you're <laughs> Yes, and I, I just pick up my remote and say EcoEarth 2003 on YouTube, and it pops up right in my oh, living room. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah. yeah. That is that is just great. And it's a fun video. Yeah, you know, one of the uh, questions I, I know you'll get, uh, and one that I'll get is, how do I contact you? How do I contribute? Okay, you can go to our website, which is salemparksfoundation.org, okay. and, and, and you can hit projects, or I think EcoWorth comes up easily, and then there's a donate online button, but there's also information on how to send a check to our post office box, and so you can donate that How's way. How's the money going? It's going pretty good. We have so far, we have just launched a um, kind of a smallish campaign of just for local individual donations and we've got $45,000 that way which is very nice and now that we have that pot of money we're uh, approaching foundations for grants we're now in the grant writing mode and we will be approaching some businesses in town also for some larger donations because we have to earn How we much have to you make, make? $300,000 is what is your vote, goal is our okay. goal yes yeah when you reach the 300,000, and presumably the city and others assist in finishing up, what will the ultimate cost be? Well, th th there was a group brought in to make that estimate at the end of 2020. Right. So the price may have gone up a bit, but they came to $400,000 was their estimate. And so we offered to do the 300,000. and. Ah. And some of that cost is just administrative, and the city is taking that over. Oh, good. And, and I think the funding from there is coming from the hotel tax because it is in a tourist attracting park. And how long? How long until we see it completed? Or, constru uh, you know, I, construction begins is kind of dependent on the money. But, yes. But once it starts, do you have any feel for how long it'll take? Once it starts, the estimate is it should only, it should take less than two months to oh, wow. to do the the retiling and and the resealing and 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 the finishing. So it, it won't be long once it gets going. And so we, it's back in business two months after the money's raised. That should help people. Well, yes, <laughs> it's back in business two months after the work starts. You know, right. because once the money is raised, then the city will go through a bidding process to right. find the restoration firm to do the job. And, uh, and my understanding it. is it'll look exactly the way it did, only better. It'll be only in just b brand it, new condition. It, it won't have be. pieces hanging off. Yes, and, yeah, yeah. And there so. won't be any moss and algae and things on it either. So, Do yeah. you have any other big projects going on? No, that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, yeah. well, we have our regular fundraising for our neighborhood park grants. Oh, great. We, are, okay. uh, we aren't abandoning those for this. And, uh, and so if people want to donate to EcoEarth, however, they do have to specify that that's what their donation ah, is for. Okay. Because otherwise we put money into our neighborhood park grant program. Sure. So people need to make that clear. Well, on behalf of the council and the community at large, thank you so much. I know you have been the spark plug on this as long as I can remember <laughs> in terms of, of just this being such a successful program, Carol. And I really want to thank you very much on behalf of the community for all the work you've done. And this will be such a uh, an exciting project to see get underway. Yeah, it's it's we're it's really, fun. Yeah. We're really excited. <laughs> Thank you very much for being with me today. You bet.